What's up guys, I'm Josh Mosman and welcome to This Week in MXA, episode number 96, presented by O'Neill Racing. Thank you guys for tuning in to this video. We are gonna be talking about the World Supercross finale that just happened this past weekend in Australia. It was a chaotic event that made for some exciting racing to watch. We'll also talk about the World Vet Championships coming up in two weeks or a week and a half and the 2023 Yamaha YZ450, the most highly anticipated bike of the new model season and more. Let's dive into it. All right, guys, we got to talk about the World Supercross series in Australia. Chaos, chaos, chaos coming from that event. If you uh, didn't watch it at all or didn't see any of the highlights, you just saw the results with Ken Roxon winning uh, the championship and with Joey Savacci winning the night. That's pretty impressive. Pretty interesting to see Joey Savacci win, but when you zoom in a little closer and you watch all three main events the way it unfolded was truly exciting i actually didn't stay up until midnight or until 1 a.m here in california to watch the race so i watched it later but thinking back it was a pretty exciting show to watch and uh pretty cool to see the three main events and how it worked out to make for such a dramatic season finale for this two race pilot season. First off, congrats to Joey Savacci for getting the win. Uh, that also meant that Ken Roxon won the world championship without winning a race because Eli Tomac won the first round in the UK, but he didn't go to Australia. That meant that Ken Roxon was the new points leader. He didn't win the night though. Joey Savacci got the overall win. So congrats to Joey Savacci and the Rick Ware racing team. Talking about the details, everybody's seen the drama between the Moto Concepts Honda riders, Justin Brayton and Vince Freeze. The first main event, Ken Roxon got the win. The second main event, Ken Roxon got a flat tire. And uh, the flat tires, they don't normally happen in Supercross, but I did get to talk to Moto Concepts Honda team manager, Tony Alessi, and he said he saw nails in the dirt in the UK, and he saw sharp rocks embedded in the dirt in Australia. So that's why we were seeing a lot of flat tires at both races. That's something you never see in the AMA Supercross series here with Dirtworks prepping the tracks, with Feld putting the tracks together. Um, they do a good job of screening the dirt to keep sharp rocks, nails, and uh, other debris out of the dirt. But uh, that was not the case of these two rounds. Ken Roxon was one of many riders that got a flat tire. Derek Drake, he ended up with a broken wrist, I believe, from a flat tire he received on practice. So Ken Roxon gets a flat, DNFs the second main event, and guess what? Vince Freeze, if the night would have ended there, he would have been the world champion. He was a one point ahead of his teammate, Justin Brayton, after the first two main events on the night. That's the other exciting thing about the World Supercross series. Series, three main events that all pay full points for the championship. So eight lap main event and then a 12 lap main event. That is the 450 show and that is uh, three races that pay full championship points each time you're out there. They actually extended the time in between the motos from the first round to the second round after talking with the riders and the teams. They decided to bump it from about four minutes to close to six minutes for Australia. So a little more time in between, but still not quite enough uh, for everybody to get their bearings straight. Tony Alessi, he said that it feels like one main event with two pit stops in between because your heart rate never truly comes down. You're not going back to the pits to change stuff on your bike. You get off the track, you get back on the line and you go again. So it keeps things interesting. I personally think it's an exciting way to watch Supercross racing and it's very different from the Triple Crown formats we have here in the US where you have more time to go back, take a break, get something to eat, change stuff on the bike while the 250s race here in the US. It's also very different because of the way the points are paid per race rather than you know getting an overall and then getting the points paid off of that. So interesting topic there. Um, if there was only one main event and Ken Roxon got that flat, Vince Freeze would have been the world champion. Uh, if there was only two main events and Ken Roxon got that flat, Vince Freeze would have been the world champion. But thankfully for Ken Roxon and thankfully for the series in general, there was three main events and Ken Roxon had a chance to redeem himself in the finale and that's when the drama happened. Uh, Vince Freeze didn't have the best to start, which is unusual for him. And he saw his teammate, Justin Brayton, his main rival and the guy who was closest to him in the championship to his outside. Vince swerved to the right, took out Justin Brayton and took himself out also. That's the number one rule for takeouts and for block passes. If if you go down two, it's, it's not clean. But uh, bummer deal for that. Bummer deal for Justin Brayton and Vince Freeze. That allowed Ken Roxon to fairly easily get the win. Although because of the point structure, uh, he didn't know that he won the championship until a couple minutes after the race. Joey Savacci, he won that moto. So uh, Joey went 2-1-1 and got the overall for the night. So awesome for Joey Savacci. Ken Roxon 
finished second overall in the night. He got the world championship and then the drama continued after that when Justin Brayton uh, had enough of Vince Freeze. He found out that Vince actually offered a competitor, Grant Harlan, to pay. He, Vince, on the starting line, offered Grant $2,000 to take out Justin Brayton. That is unacceptable in any kind of sports. Obviously, I don't think that's the first time that's ever happened in motocross or supercross. I, I, I really can't. I don't think there's any way I could really understand how you could do that, but uh, I do understand dirty racing and taking riders out and block passing for a championship. I mean, that's a championship. You got to do what you got to do. But talking to Tony Lessie about it afterwards, he said that there was actually no championship bonus that came from the FIM World Supercross series. So that's a very interesting topic. You know, what the riders have worked out individually with their teams is another topic, but the World Supercross Series, they paid positions for each race, but they didn't pay a championship bonus, at least not this year for the pilot season. So for Vince Freeze, uh, there wasn't a huge bonus on the line from the promoter and uh, definitely a bummer to see how it all worked out. But man, this motocross, supercross world, for me being a media uh, guy, a journalist, a test rider, talking about it, I mean, every week there's something crazy going on in our industry. Every week there's uh, crazy news crazy headlines going on in our industry and this week it's uh, Vince Freeze, Justin Brayton, World Supercross Series is done and uh, already looking forward to 2023 and we'll see what bugs they work out and uh, see what happens next year. In other news, we have to cover this, even though it's not motocross racing, but the, the freestyle action that happened also down in Australia this past weekend is definitely something worthy to be mentioned on this week's episode. J.O. Archer and Harry Bink, two Australians at the Nitro Circus World Games in Australia, they both landed triple backflips. Very impressive. Uh, J.O. Archer, I met him a long time ago when I was actually racing in Indonesia on a Suzuki. He was on a KX250, I believe, doing some freestyle shows at the race I was at. I think that was 2011 or 2010, way back then. Maybe 2012, actually. Um, but pretty cool to see where he's come since then and uh, doing a triple backflip in a competition. Very, very impressive and definitely worthy of a mention on this week's episode. Next up, I wanna highlight the 2023 Yamaha YZ450 video that we just released on our YouTube channel on Monday. Very excited about that video. It was a lot of fun getting to ride at the Goat Farm, formerly Ricky Carmichael's Goat Farm, now the Star Racing Yamaha crew, they bought the place, they've refurbished it, and uh, they're doing some good things with it. We did a video on our YouTube channel last week that you can check out a full tour of the race shop that Star Racing Yamaha built at the Goat Farm facility. So pretty cool, they have the full race shop there, the track right there in the backyard, um, you can see Jeremy Coker's office with the track right in the backyard. Be sure to check that out if you haven't seen it yet. Very impressive stuff. Uh, a couple rooms that we didn't get to show you in that video, the engine room and the suspension room. Star Racing Yamaha did not want to share their secrets with the cameras, so we got the poker heads in there, but we didn't get to take any videos or pictures. Uh, we also forgot to mention the shower room. Uh, that's one room that was uh, we didn't get to on our tour. Um, they got a bunch of showers, lockers in there for the riders to keep their gear and stuff, but everything else, uh, the, the race shop with all the bikes, the parts area and the parts storage area, they got the meeting rooms, the championship bike room, and also the upper deck with all the old parts. You could just see FMF mufflers that have been crashed, uh, carbon fiber fuel tanks that are just uh, left over from years before, plastics, all kinds of cool stuff up there and lots of engines <laughs> laying around. So cool stuff. Be sure to check out that video. As far as the new Yamaha 450, I was very, very impressed with that bike. Obviously Yamaha gave us an epic track, perfect track condition. So of course you're going to feel amazing on the bike, but I was super, super impressed with it. If you guys haven't seen it yet, you should check out that video and uh, you could tell how excited I was and how good I felt on it by the, the whip action. We were getting and the scrub uh, scrubs that were happening off some of those jumps. So I don't don't whip or scrub unless I'm feeling comfortable on the bike. So good times on the Yamaha. Excited to get that bike back here to California in a couple weeks, and we'll have uh, more testing to do on that thing. So good times, check it out. I also got a quick little interview with Steven Tokarski, one of the Yamaha R&D test riders. And uh, he's a good buddy of ours. And uh, he talks a little bit about what it's like just to finally get to that event and be able to share with uh, everybody the Yamaha 450. All right, Stevie, finally riding now. You got some, uh, some petrol going in the factory way. How's uh spilling it? Spilling a little bit, but I mean, it's leaking. What's it like to be a Steven Tikarski right now at the goat farm? Uh, the nerves have gone down a little bit now that you guys have ridden the bike and are happier than expected. So that's a good thing. 
I like it. But uh, happier than expected. You didn't have high hopes. No, I just always, always get nervous for these things, and I always, uh, I always think the worst, and I always like to have the good things come if they do come. Okay. Okay. But yeah, dude, you can't beat it. We're in Florida or Georgia. Don't get mad at me for that. Uh, the dirt's amazing, and we're gonna rip some laps later. What do you, think, you. What do you think about the, the, the doubles, the tables? Perfect for whips, huh? Yeah, yeah. I think there's two jumps out there, a little intimidating for the guys because it's a little peaky. So if you case them, it might be a little bad. But other than that, all the tabletops and just there's a lot of elevation they brought in, so it's really good to see how the bike feels and a lot different than California for yeah, sure. And you've been riding it for a long time so it feels good to finally let other people ride it and yeah. talk about it. Yeah, it feels good to have um, my happiness go out there with other people. I like it, good yeah. stuff. Next up, I want to touch on the 2023 Suzuki RMZ250 video that we just posted last week. MXA test rider Brian Medeiros, he jumped on camera with me and we talked back and forth about that bike. It was just fun to have him on there. We appreciate him. He's our resident Suzuki test rider, as we like to say. And we both forgot to mention that when you buy a new 2023 Suzuki 250 or 450 through the end of this year, they'll give you a free Yoshimura exhaust system, a full RS12 exhaust and you get throttle syndicate graphics with the RM edition, RM Army edition graphics. So pretty cool. Two thumbs up from Suzuki for offering free power and uh, free, free graphics with their new bikes. So how you get that, it doesn't come on the bike, but as soon as you buy the 23 Suzuki 250 or 450 from your dealer, they'll register the VIN number through Suzuki. Uh, Suzuki will ship them the Yoshimura exhaust and the graphics, and then they'll give those to you from your dealership. So that's how it works. Cool stuff from Suzuki. And lastly, on the schedule this weekend, we got October Cross at Glen Helen. It's a warm up race for the World Vet Championship. So it's Saturday MX on the main track this Saturday at Glen Helen, and then the following weekend, about a week and a half from when this video comes out, we will be racing the W World Vet Championship at Glen Helen. It's going to be a lot of fun. New three moto format, which will be cool. I'll be there racing in the 25 plus class and we'll have a lot of guys uh, of our vet riders riding in the 30 plus, the 40 plus, 50 plus. It'll be a good time. So I'm looking forward to being there racing and hanging out with everybody. Also this Saturday, I'll be out at Paula at Fox Raceway for a Panic Rev ride day. Uh, Panic Rev is a Christian motocross ministry. They're going to be offering free lunch to anybody who shows up. So if you're coming out to Paula or if you're looking for a place to ride and you don't want to race at Glen Helen, come join me and the guys at Paula this Saturday. So looking forward to it. Thank you guys for tuning into this video. If you see me at Paula or at Glen Helen for World Vet or at the track any other time, be sure to stop by, say hi, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.